Hi, I'm Mooney and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Wait, that's not usually how I start it. Rewind. Hi, I'm Mooney. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, Alright, I think we're gonna say hi Mooney, welcome to my channel. It doesn't have to be extravagant. Like I don't have to do anything extravagant. It doesn't have to be this big old catchphrase thing. I don't even have the energy to even make catchphrase. So I'm just gonna say hi Mooney, welcome to my channel. You know you're gonna enjoy this video. So you're gonna do my makeup while talking about being a black woman. We're gonna talk about the upsides and the downsides and things that we can fix as a community and things that we need to pay attention to when it comes to mental health look it's gonna be a chill video grab your drinks grab your food and just like come sit with me and let's talk and do some makeup okay all right hey Moni. <laughs> let's just hope it turns out like a good video and there's nothing embarrassing behind me all right, you guys, we're starting off strong. We're starting off with our wet and wild primer. And you know what? I don't want this to be just a conversation about makeup. It's been a while since I've been, ooh. It's been a while since I've been posting. Also, I've been having like this weird burnout thing going on. So it's like a little difficult for me to come up with new ideas. I don't, I want to be as authentic as possible on this channel. I want to do things that make sense for my channel. One thing I've been looking into are video essays. There are some things I'm passionate about that I could talk about for hours, especially regarding the topic of black women and the media, but like not in a bad way. I'm not going to be making videos like, you know, why black women are baby mamas and like, you know, not those videos. Like I'm not interested in doing that type of content. I want to do stuff like black love stories, just love stories featuring black women in general. And I've been thinking about doing it with media that, you know, showcase that. We hear this conversation a lot about how black women are not featured in media and how black women are done dirty in media. But I actually want to, you know, shine light on the media that does not do that. And I know it might not be a lot of them, but I still, want to give it a try. Now we're in the foundation part, y'all. It's gonna be a very fast makeup routine. Um, we're using the Urban Decay Foundation. I think it's the Face Bond. Fun fact, I'm starting a new skincare routine. And that was kind of random, but I just had to bring it up. I don't know if anybody cares. But anyways, as I was saying, I wanna start doing video es essays that portray black women in a good light. You know, in certain medias that don't fall into stereotypes or bad tropes. I feel like there's some good ones out there that I'd like to shine on, that I'd like to shine on. I feel like there are some good ones out there that I'd love to shine. Why the fuck can't I talk? Let me start that over again. I feel like there's some good medias out there that I'd love to shine light on. They could be a little bit underrated or they could be known. It doesn't really matter. I just feel like I want to start doing positive things for black women on my channel. It'd just be cool. Like, you know, it will bring us a little bit of peace. We're tired of hearing the downsides of being black. We're tired of hearing how much society quote unquote doesn't want us. I don't want to keep, I don't want to promote that on my channel. I want to promote love and you know, our love stories. Cause we do have some out there. Not even some, I thought we have, we have a good amount out there that I would like to shut watched. Why, why can't I say it? It's like a tongue twister. <laughs> this is the super fix holding spray. And I just spray it onto this brush right here because it just holds my makeup. And I just love how it holds all my makeup. But speaking of this, we need to also discuss the trauma. Oh my God, I put too much foundation. That's too much foundation. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I mean, it still somewhat matches, but it's too much. But anyways, we can shed light and bring awareness to what black women go through, but we can also talk about the good stuff too. You know, we can't make it seem like there's no chance for us and like we're, we're screwed. Like, you know, that's not the case. We're not screwed. There is love for us out there. You know, we just need to go where we're loved. I've always been a strong believer in that, even though it's hard, it's easier said than done. I'm still a strong believer that there's someone for everyone. Well, not for everyone. Let me not lie. I'm not that optimistic. I want the young, especially the young black girls to see this channel and you know, not leave after a video feeling doomed romantically or platonically or feel like, you know, there is no place for them in society. I want to do the opposite of that. So my first video essay video is going to be um, video essay video. Hmm. My first video essay is going to be about intergalactic. It's not intergalactic. I don't really know how to pronounce it that well, but it's one of my favorite movies and it was really nice, really fresh, really, you know, different. It was a breath of fresh air. I was like, I want to talk about this. More black women need to see movies like this. We need to talk about more movies like this. I'm going to go looking for some more and I'm going to do like 
videos on it. I'm not sure how long I want my video to be. I don't think I want a super long video because one thing about me, I'm very, very lazy when it comes to editing. And I feel like video essays, if you want to keep the viewer's attention, it comes with a lot of editing. I've been getting better at editing. I use CapCut for everything. I, I feel like if I enjoy the topic enough, I should be able to stay in tune with it. I should be able to keep the viewer interested and talk about black love and really any love, any love featuring a black woman where she's cherished and she's not second place and she's not being cheated on or abused or forced to go through these trials and tribulations of black love like the media likes to portray as long as it's none of that it should be straight we should we should be okay another thing i've been looking i've been looking into practicing authenticity if that's how you say it y'all let me know if i'm even saying it right i want to be more authentic everything i do i realize is for black women i am black women's like top supporter and i just want black women to just feel good it won't be all the time it's not realistic for a human being to feel good all the time but i feel like we need to work towards promoting each other more in a good light like you know not just promoting each other just promote each other but like in a good light promoting things like we're more than just our bodies too that's another thing i would like to touch bases on we're more than how the male gaze craves us because i really don't care about the male gaze don't really care about them y'all don't need to worry about that because i will not be focusing on any of that black women are more than how much a man perceives them. Yeah, I wanna talk about love on my channel, specifically black love. I also wanna talk about other things too. It doesn't have to be just that. We're more than that. Oh shit. Can you guys see me? Sorry, I had a phone call. What was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying. What was I saying? It was something about black women, was it not? I wanna be more authentic showing like, you know. I don't want to have to do my makeup all the time and stuff like that and throw this image that for black women to be beautiful they have to be done up i really don't want to do that but at the same time i do love wearing makeup guys for me like this isn't for anybody i love makeup makeup is like the way i express myself it's the way i challenge my features or enhance them so it's kind of like that that's my relationship with makeup but at the same time i do feel like if i do end up having a younger audience in general i want to also show that side of myself that's like just chilling like not everything has to be like you know tens across the board like black women don't have to be tens across the board we really don't and i'm sorry that society told us that we did all right guys i'm gonna like blend this makeup in real quick did i put too much concealer guys i'm not gonna lie i did not anyways i'm gonna dive into trauma a little bit and it's gonna start with let's say middle school because i feel like it's a conversation i'd like to address so i have a lot of racial trauma I have a lot of racial trauma it took me a long time to even be I'm not nice to myself, but it took a while for me to even like not despise myself. I have my moments. I do have trauma with my identity and who I was growing up. Um, an example I would like to use, I was definitely one of those black kids growing up that if you were to ask their race, they're gonna start up making up races on the spot, like anything but black. I was ashamed to be Haitian. I was ashamed to be black. The school I went to at the time, there were black girls there, but we were not the standard. That was known from the get-go. If you were a black girl, something about you had to stand out. Like you had to have super long hair or you had to have naturally straight hair, like not perm, like it had to be like naturally straight. You had to look like you were mixed with at least something. You couldn't just be black. I'm gonna put screenshots of like my old Instagram. It's something very personal to me, but I was thinking like, you know, this is the reality of it. This is the reality of what happens when you're surrounded by people who literally hate black people. Um, I was 12 and I already had an issue with my identity and who I was as a person because of my environment. I used to think like if I told people I was mixed with something, then they would treat me better. I'd be seen in a better light. I'd be seen as pretty. I'd be seen as somebody worth pursuing because I felt at the time that because I was black, I was not worth pursuing. And it's not something that I even just felt. I was told, I was shown that that was the case. You're not worth pursuing if you don't look somewhat ambiguous. I used to go around making up lies, telling people I was European, half native, half this, half that. Even if I had those things in my blood, it's like a very small percent. And I still made a big deal out of it anyways, because I was hoping it'd be enough to make me wanted. I don't know if it's because my parents neglected me. I don't know if they neglected me. Like I had parents growing up, but something went wrong. I'd also like to bring up that I do have ADHD and I'm very, very 
very sensitive to rejection. I'm, I've am i been a little bit better at it, but not much has really changed. So whenever I got rejected, it would be like a blow to my whole fucking life. My world was ready to end, like literally. I'm talking literally like. I was one of those kids, if I liked a boy and he rejected me, I'll start calling myself all types of things. I'll call myself ugly. I'll cry to my friends all the time. I remember my friends at the time didn't know what to do because they were already somewhat the standard. Like I wasn't really friends with the popular girls, but I was friends with people who were not entirely black. They had a privilege I didn't, some way, somehow. Hold on girl, I gotta blend out this nose, you hear me? Mind you, we were just like little kids or whatever. Like, I don't know why middle school felt so real. Middle school felt like the end of the world to me. I'm getting introduced to seeing people get axed out, seeing boys like girls, and you know, that's where the, the comparison comes in. That's where the thoughts of why her and not me came in. And you know, matter of fact, Let's rewind a little bit. I actually first had these thoughts, I wanna say second grade, but that's like a completely different situation. So I'm gonna say fifth grade to be like cautious or to be as accurate as possible. In fifth grade, I had a crush on this boy. <gasps> I'm not even gonna say his name. I'm not even gonna say it. I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna call him Rocky. I had a crush on a boy named Rocky. I ended up telling him because at that time, that's when girls were starting to get axed out. Fifth grade. Valentine's Day came around. I would see which girls got chocolates versus which ones didn't. And I wasn't the one that got chocolates. You know, I'm so sensitive that that still affects me to this day. I'm not afraid to admit when trauma affects me. Trauma could be different for everybody. Somebody could get traumatized by an orange. That doesn't make their trauma less real. And I'm not afraid to admit that. I'm not afraid to say like, you know, I've been traumatized by the smallest things. So seeing those girls get the chocolates and I did it, that was a little bit of tr trauma for me. Like that right there, that's when the comparison started. That's when my brain started going, why is she getting chocolates and I'm not? So I start making the physical comparisons. Okay, so this is what she looked like and this is what I look like. And this is what that other girl looks like and she got chocolates and this is what I look like. And when my brain starts doing the math, honey, and when it starts like realizing, I didn't understand racism or colorism at that age, but I knew something was different. I knew something, there was a reason. I couldn't tell what the reason was so i like this boy and one day i ended up confessing to him i didn't even realize that i was confessing because again i don't know these things i'm just copying what the other girls do so i tell him you know i like you and then he's like oh well i like your best friend and i was like oh because you know that's not the reaction the other girls got the other girls will get and I like you too. So I was like, wait, why is my script not going the way I want it to go? So I remember asking him like, what does my best friend have that I don't? And he couldn't tell me at the time. Like he, he, he was like, oh, she just looks. And I was thinking better. He was like, mm. and I was like, is her uniform cleaner than mine? Which is such a childish question. Like I'm just a kid. Like, you know, I don't get it. I don't get what the big deal is. I don't understand why we can't be together. And I'm not saying this man owed me a relationship, not man, boy. I'm not saying he owed me a relationship, but my brain just couldn't comprehend what was going on. So I was like, what is it? And then he was like, she's, and I was like, pretty? And he was like, yeah, she's pretty, but also, and he just could not finish. And I was like, it's like he was looking at my skin, but you know, he couldn't say it. And it took me like until, I wanna say, when did it really hit me? I think it hit me in high school, what the issue really was. Because I've already dealt with all of it, all the colorism, all the the racist bullshit in middle school. So by high school, I was well informed what the issue was the entire time. Oh God, something with my eye. He, he, he could never tell me, but I ended, I ended up figuring it out. It's because she was a white Hispanic and I was just black. But my blackness now, I love being black. I'm sorry, I wouldn't trade my race for the world. Am I still making, trying to get used to my identity? Yes, but I wouldn't, I'm realizing, you know, being black is so, I love, I love me, like I like my skin color, like I do. In my brain at the time, when I was in high school and middle school, to me being black was a curse. My childlike brain saw it as something that was just wrong with me. Like I just came out wrong. Like, you know, the girls came out good, I came out wrong. And this is just what happens when you come out wrong. I kept having crushes on boys though, because I had this hope that one of them would look past that. They never did though. Either they weren't attracted to me because they thought I was ugly or it's because I was black. It was really never either or. I have pictures of me in middle school and I'll probably try to put it up on the screen. I wasn't like, you know, 
but I thought I looked pretty regular. Black girls can't be regular. We're supposed to be a 10 out of 10 if we want to even be glanced at. For me to admit I was just black took a while and it took even longer for me to admit I was Haitian. That's another thing because being black is one thing, but at the time, if you were Haitian, you know, the same way Africans were treated, Haitians were in that same caliber 100%. We were just seen as dirty for some reason, which is so crazy. It's to the point where I'm exposing so much right now. So y'all better not judge 13, 12 year old, 14 year old me because most of us have been through this. Y'all better not be hollering because you will get checked, trust. Wait, what am I doing right now? I don't remember what I was gonna say before that. So I'm sorry for forgetting. Wow, that thing smells good. So being Haitian, you were kind of treated the way anybody who was African was treated at the time. And it just sucks on both sides. It's one thing to be black. You, There's a specific black you really can't be. Like, okay, you're black, but if you're Haitian or African, you need to really get out the way. Like, it was kind of like that, which sucked because African Haitian people are beautiful. It just took a while for me to accept that for the Haitian side. I been new Africans were bad, sorry. I just kept crushing on boys. And I keep repeating this because y'all need to understand. It's like, I'm, I'm desperate for acceptance. My body's in denial. My brain is like, okay, there is no way absolutely nobody likes you. My brain just couldn't accept it. It was just like, no, like you can't tell me this. You can't tell me that the other girls get true love and you don't get true love. There's nobody for you. Cause I was always a hopeless romantic. I read a lot of fan fiction. So I wanted to experience what Wine was experiencing. Those white main characters, those OCs. I wanted to experience what they were experiencing. But when I kept seeing that we were, we just were not in the mix. I was like, wait, wait a damn minute. What's going on guys? What is really going on? It just took me so long to come to terms with everything but at the end of the day nobody said growth was linear there's not a specific age to start growing sorry there isn't it's either you wake up one day and realize or you just keep going through trials until you realize if you ever do i hated myself there was a point of time where i couldn't look in mirrors i was bleaching my skin i was putting raw actual honey in my eyes because youtube at that time i followed or watched black people who hated themselves too so i was watching black people who was getting who were getting like eye surgeries to make their eyes blue i was watching black people who were using skin lightening products i was watching black people who just did not like themselves the only person that came about that made me that made me realize wait i'm black and i don't mind it a little bit was samarella samarella was a huge change for me and then seeing quinn was it blackwell she was another one, another Vine girl back in the day. Seeing her also like come out and like be able to be black and funny and likable, I was like, okay. I know I'm saying so a lot, so I'm really sorry. I'm supposed to let this sit, but I'm kind of in a rush. I don't know if I can really let it sit for real, the powder. I don't know if it's Anastasia, Anastasia Beverly Hills. If it's not, it's not Anastasia, is it? Anastasia, I think it's Anastasia Beverly Hills. I can't pronounce words, which is so funny because growing up, I was a big reader. Like I would read chapter books in kindergarten, but I can't pronounce words. And it's like, I recognize words and I know them, but I can never really pronounce them. So it's always been like that. There's words I'm gonna say wrong. It just is what it is. I'm gonna blend it now, I'm impatient. King Batch though kind of threw us back several years. He owes black people real life preparations for that. I'll be waiting. One thing I will admit, it's, it's gonna be like a, <gasps> it's something I wasn't sure if I was gonna tell anybody yet, but I did get diagnosed with body dysmorphia. I'm really obsessed with my appearance. I love makeup, but to me, my makeup has to be so specific. So perfect and i'm working on it i'm in therapy i'm trying to remind myself that i'm more than just my body and it's okay if i'm not perfect but it's not easy like this is like real life trials and tribulation i will really like spend so long just critiquing and analyzing my appearance and all that cool stuff the adhd going untreated did not help because i got treated for adhd like two weeks ago so i went so long and i was just getting illness after illness it started with depression then it morphed into anxiety it just kept getting worse and worse and then the body dysmorphia came which i'm not shocked about it sucks and whatever black women can be traumatized we don't talk about that i don't know why nobody's talking about that like you go through these things you live in a society that tells you your existence is not beautiful we're supposed to sit there and act like black girl magic no that's not everybody i hate when lots of black women try to tell us to get over it and to move on and just love ourselves you don't understand the damage that can do to somebody's psych once we start taking the psych of black women seriously that's why we'll be having these stupid discussions on twitter on how many rags they use and having these competitions on who looks better like that's damage to somebody's psych after years of not being accepted after years of being told they're not good enough that's just what happens i'm not shocked 
when I do see it, I do get a little sad for that person and just hope that they kind of heal from it. But there will be damage. And I'm tired of y'all acting like there's not gonna be any damage. And somebody's gonna come out of like stuff like that unscathed. All right, y'all, I was putting my lashes on. They're not really, they look uneven. They look uneven. I hate uneven lashes because, oh, I'm getting pissed off. See, this is what I'm talking about. I know, I don't know. Sometimes I'll be okay with my appearance, overly okay. Like, oh my God, I'm the baddest walking. Oh my God, Yahoo's not touching me, like type of like confident. And other times it's like, I can't look in the mirror. I just don't want to look at myself. Like I don't, I don't want to pay, I don't want to go out. I don't want to meet people. I don't want to do anything. Like I get super stressed out over my appearance. Like if it doesn't look good enough, I get stressed out. I'm constantly finding ways to alter my, my appearance. And I should have known that the minute I was switching wigs back to back, like every week and I couldn't keep a hairstyle because I felt like if my hair wasn't done, then I just wasn't, you know, beautiful or I just, you know, I looked a mess. That was probably the sign that I should have been like, okay, girl, you got a problem. But I never realized it. Never realized it until recently that something was not right. Do you hear me, girl? I'm just being really open right now because this is something I'm gonna have to mention anyways. I feel like I wanna be more open on my channel. I'm not perfect. I don't want anybody to ever look at me and think, okay, she's perfect. She's, you know, she has it all. She's, no, no, that's not the case at all. I'm not perfect and I don't have it all. I'm constantly comparing myself to people, constantly, you know, thinking, oh my God, if only I look like that. If only I was her. She's probably so lucky. Blase, 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 blase. Ooh. I hate my makeup like I don't know what happened like I actually I don't like the way my nose my nose is like really bothering me I try not to really contour my nose like for real for real I know that there are people who take actual minutes like shaping their nose I don't really do that I need to be okay with my nose and the part that breaks my heart is that I know black women are so beautiful and it sucks that we've been told we're not it just bothers me so much that it had to happen to us this way i wish i could go back to my younger self and try to have a conversation with her because she would need it i would have to like explain to her like what kind of world we're living in for real and i don't know if she'd be able to accept it she was always in denial okay we're gonna do my lips i want y'all to be able to see me do my lips let me lower this a little bit Whenever I'm doing my lip combo, I take it super seriously. Notice how I went all quiet, like I just stopped talking because I take it so seriously. It's like a huge step in my routine. Just like blush is, it's very important to me. Like I just, it needs to be perfected. If the lip combo is busted, the whole look is done. Like I'm not joking. I'm trying to teach myself to let go of falling into the trap of the male gaze. There's some media I won't consume anymore. Western media is really not good for you. Like if you're sensitive like me and you're hyper like aware of racism, cause I'm hyper aware. I notice racism in every single little thing. That's also a trauma aspect. You're forced to analyze at a young age. You end up over analyzing it the older you get. So I see racism everywhere. To me, the smallest thing I'll be like, that's probably racist. Or this is like, there's an underlying racism in this i notice it in every single thing i'm very careful with what i watch now i'm not just gonna watch anything i'm sorry well i have started watching things with like black women as the love interest dark skin ones not biracial sorry my black my biracial queens you guys are still black but you do not represent monoracial black women. I can tell the media is trying to enforce this idea that biracial black women represent all black women. And that's just not the case. It's not even just monoracial versus biracial. Black women, there's so many of us. Like, it's not like we're so diverse. It's not just this group versus like, no, there's so many of us that we could explore. There's so much to explore. Trans black women, disabled black women, plus size black women. Like there's so much to explore and we're not seeing it. I'm not gonna watch anything that just pushes a certain agenda. I'm not feeding my trauma. I'm done feeding it. Like, mm -hmm. I love a good lip combo, y'all. I love it. I love it. Do you hear me? <laughs> my channel, I'm gonna be uplifting and promoting black women. It's what we deserve, all ages. Not just young black women, not just teen black women, all black women. We all need to be uplifted, we're good enough. I'm done talking. I've, I've been really vulnerable. I said a lot that I never thought I would say on this channel, but I did. And I feel like some people probably might need to hear it. Thank you for watching this far. I really appreciate it. All my black women have a wonderful and beautiful day. Mm -hmm.